Move your mouse up to the menu at the top, click on File, and then go to Open Scene. Open up Mechanics1.mb. Okay, so what I have here are three cubes, and I want to just focus on moving these cubes across the grid. So we're not going to focus on the principles of animation, we're just going to focus on the tools within Maya for setting keyframes and moving objects. Before we get started, I need to make sure that we have the exact same settings. Okay, so first let's go up to display and then let's go to grid and let's go to the options box. I'm going to click here and make sure it says 12 for length and width, it says 5 units for grid lines, and 5 units for subdivisions. If it doesn't have these numbers, go to edit, reset settings, and then hit apply and close. Make sure that your channel box is displaying on the right hand side. If it's not there, go up to the top corner and click on this button to show or hide the channel box. Down here at the bottom of the screen, you need to make sure you have your time slider and your range slider. If you don't have these items, go up to display, UI elements, and then turn on the time slider and the range slider. Okay, the last order of business before we get started with this exercise, let's go down here to our settings. So under our time slider, we want to go to the area for playback, and under playback speed, it says play every frame. We want to switch this to real time 24 frames per second. The other thing we want to change is if we scroll up a little bit, I want to click on animation, and then I want to click weighted tangents right here, and I want to switch from clamped tangents to linear. I'm going to talk about this section a little bit later. For now, I'm just setting up some basic parameters so that we can get started with moving objects in our scene. So go ahead and click Save, and let's get started. Let's start with this red cube right here. I'm just going to select it, and then press W for my Move tool. Now I want to animate this cube. Starting here, I want it to move across the length of this grid in one second. So I can see here on my time slider, I have frames 1 through 24. Okay, so that means I have one second on my time slider. So all I need to do to animate this cube moving across the grid is set a start point at the beginning of our clip and then move the object and then set an end point at the end of the clip and then Maya will move the object on all the frames in between the start point and the end point. Okay, make sure that your time slider is on frame 1. Make sure the red cube is selected. Let's go over to our channel box and I'm going to click on Translate X and then I'm going to right click and go to Key Selected. So now this window turns orange. That means I have a keyframe for Translate X. Okay, if I move this time slider, I can just click and drag to move it out of the way. I also have a red line on frame one right here. That means I have a keyframe on the first frame of our animation. Okay, so now what I'll do is I will first move my time slider to the end to frame 24, then I'll move the object. Now the order in which you do this is important. So you always move the time slider first and then move the object second. So I've got my final, uh, I'm at the end of the clip and I have the object moved to the destination. So now I'll go up to the channel box and I'll right click where it says Translate X and go to Key Selected. Now if I hit the play button, you can see our cube is animated. It's going from one side of the screen to the other. So we'll just go back to the beginning here. So let's say for the blue cube, we want the blue cube to move slower. If we want it to move slower, we're going to need more time in our animation. So what I'll do is I'll go over here to my range slider and I'm going to click on this little square and I'll click and hold and then drag all the way to the right. 
So now I've increased the range of my animation to 48 frames, or two seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna select this blue cube, make sure my time slider is on frame one. I'll go up to Translate X, and I'm gonna right click and go to Key Selected. Okay, so now I have a keyframe on frame one for the blue cube. Now I'll move my time slider all the way to frame 48. Then I'll move my object to the destination, which is the other side of the grid. Then I'll go in and inside the channel box, I'll right click on Translate X and go to Key Selected. So now when I hit play, this cube should move twice as slow as this cube because it has twice as much time to cover this distance of the grid. And there we have it. Okay, so let's say we want the green cube to move the length of the grid, but we want it to move even slower than these two previous cubes. Well, we'll need more time on our time slider. However, I've dragged my range slider all the way to the end. It can't be dragged any further. So we need to increase the total range of our animation. So I'm going to go over here to this window on the, um, there's two windows that say 48 frames. I'm going to go to the one on the right hand side and I'll type in 72. I'm adding another 24 frames onto my animation clip. Okay. So now I can take my range slider and drag this out, and here we have now 72 frames. So I will select this green cube, make sure my time slider is on frame one. I'll go up to Translate X, right click, and go to Key Selected. So I've set a keyframe with a value of negative 12 on the first frame of our animation. I'll move this slider all the way to the end, frame 72. Then I'll move my object. And then I'll go over here to Translate X, right click, and go to Key Selected. So now if I hit play, you can see the green cube moves even slower than the blue cube. So let's add some more animation here. Right now, the green cube is moving for the entire time the clip plays. But the red cube and the blue cube stop earlier. So let's keep these cubes moving for all 72 frames. So what that means is I'll select the red cube right here. And I'll go from 1 to 24. And we have our animation there. So from 24 to 48 frames, let's move this back to the other side of the grid, okay? Because we know from 1 to 24, it goes the distance of the grid. So at 48, it'll go back to the start point, the original start point. So I map frame 48. I'll now move my cube back to the start point. Okay, then I'll go, I'll click right now, Translate X is not selected. I'll just click once on Translate X let go and then I'll right click and go to key selected. Okay. So now I've set a keyframe on frame 48 for the cube on the other side of the grid. Now I'll move the time slider forward to frame 72. Then I'll take the red cube and move it across the grid once again. And then I'll go over to the channel box and I'll right click on translate X and go to key selected. Now, if I play the animation, you can see the red cube is moving across the screen for the entire length of the clip. Okay, so let's now work on this blue cube right here. So if we watch, if we scrub through our clip right here, I click on this time slider, the little black box, and drag. I've got animation all the way up to 48, and then that cube stops. So now we want to go in the opposite direction towards the start point again. However, it took 48 frames for it to cross the length of the grid, which means if I only have 
24 more frames right here, that means I can only go half the distance of this grid. So now I've moved my time slider to frame 72. Now I'll move the cube only half the distance of the grid. And then I will right click and go to key selected. So now if I hit play, we can see all three of these objects are moving the entire for all 72 frames or three seconds of our clip. So let's say we want to add animation on top of what we've already created so we can layer our animation. Well, What I could do is I could say well I want this also to rotate so I'll take my time slider make sure it's on frame one and let's set a keyframe on rotate X so I'll click on the channel rotate X and then I'll right click and go to key selected so now I've set my rotation value at zero let's say I want this cube to rotate 360 degrees every time it covers the distance of the grid so that means at 24 it would be 360, 360 degrees. At 48 frames it would be 720 degrees and at 72 frames it would be 1080. Okay, so here we have rotate x value of 0 on frame 1. All we have to do is go all the way to 72 and then we'll change our rotate value to 1080 and I'll press return I'll click on rotate X right click and go to key selected now if I hit play you can see that cube is not only moving across the screen but it's also rotating on its x-axis okay let's take a look at this blue cube so let's say we want the blue cube to rotate slower than the red cube we know that the red cube rotates 360 degrees every time it crosses the length of the grid so why don't we cut the rotation of the blue cube in half for the blue cube let's say it does 180 degrees when it crosses the length of the grid so we know it's going to start here go to this side of the grid and then stop here so that would be from here to here it would be 180 degrees and then from here to here it would be only 90 degrees so that would be a total of 270 degrees of rotation so on frame one right here let's rotate on a different channel I'll click on rotate Y and I'll just right click and go to key selected so I've got a keyframe our rotation value is zero here. I'll just go all the way to the end of the animation and then I'll change this uh, rotation number the value to 270 and then press return and then I'm going to click on rotate Y and then right click and go to key selected. So I'll hit play right here and you can see now this second cube, the blue cube, is rotating on the y-axis 270 degrees. Let's take a look at the green cube. Let's say for the green cube we only want to rotate 90 degrees for every time it covers the distance, the length of this grid. So I'll rotate on the z-axis this time. So I'm going to right click and go to key selected. and I'll go all the way to the end of the animation and I'm going to rotate 90 degrees and I'm going to say negative 90 because I want to see that white face rotate forward. I want to be able to track the rotation. Okay, So I'll press return. I'll click on uh, rotate Z right here and then I'll right click and go to key selected. So I'll hit play and there we have our rotation on Z. So we can rotate all these individual channels, but there are other things that we can animate. For example, if I um, go down to this layer right here and turn on the visibility 
of the black box layer, we've got another a fourth cube right here. And if I wanted to, I could actually go in and rotate something else besides what's in this channel box by default. I could go to Window, Rendering Editors, and then the Hypershade. And I could select this black material right here. And I could go in and I could key the color channels right here, so red, green, and blue. So what I'll do is I'll click and drag to select all three channels for the color. Make sure my um, time slider is on frame one. And then I'll go in and I'll right click and go to key selected. So now I've got a keyframe. So our values for red, green, and blue are at zero, which means that our shader is going to be entirely black. And I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second. I'm going to go all the way to frame 70 or 72, and I'm going to change the values here to 1 for red, for green, and for blue. And that's going to give us white. So now I can click and drag to select all three of these channels, and then I'll right click and go to key selected. So I'll move my time slider all the way back to 1, and I'll look at my color for R, G, and B, and they're all set to 0, which means my shader is going to be black. I'll move my time slider all the way to 72, and I'll check the color for R, G, B. They're all set to 1, which means my shader is going to be white. So after I hit play, I can watch that shader change from black to white as the time slider moves through the clip. So this is the conclusion of our first exercise in animation. Please make sure that you save your work before you quit Maya.